All right, good morning. We're speaking here from Oshkosh 2010. I'm Rob Ray, and we're very fortunate this morning to have a few minutes of Vans Aircraft's Ken Kruger, who is uh, the design genius and, in my humble opinion, the man responsible for bringing Vans Aircraft into the 21st century. And with that, without further ado, I'd like to talk to Ken this morning and just ask him a few questions about where he thinks the world of sport aviation is going, in his humble opinion, and then maybe talk a little bit about design. So first, good morning, Ken. Hi, Rob. Good morning. Thanks for talking to me. Yes, sir. Well, first, what I wanted to ask you is, is uh, with the advent of the LSA coming on board and some of the ELSAs and some of the things where the FAA is granting some uh, latitude to uh, experimental aircraft manufacturers and allowing them to actually um, designate and build aircraft that people are going to be able to fly without an FAA quote-unquote medical, uh, and you can see the cost of fuel is going up and up and with the Rotax 912 and some more of the LSA type aircraft using this type engine that allows them to use auto fuel, where do you think uh, this, this is taking us? Do you think we're headed towards a different direction uh, away from where we've been going in the past? Yeah, I think we, we are, and in fact, I'm actually encouraged because one of the biggest challenges uh, for our, you know, for sport aviation, for general aviation, is safety and affordability in that order. So um, the Rotax engine itself is really a well-proven engine, so I think we've got a good safety record there. We're not kind of pulling together a lot of untried things and, and flying on them. And then, of course, the affordability factor. We can run auto fuel now. We're running it on a smaller horsepower engine, so we're burning less of it per hour. And yet, um, for me and the flight out with the RV-12, uh, very comfortable traveling machine. So we're going 120 knots, yeah, which seems slow if you're an RV driver. And, but yet, no, it, you can really cover some ground, and uh, it makes it a very good traveling machine as well. As far as the direction that we're going now, um, I think before LSAs the trend was bigger, faster, you know, more expensive, and you'd see the cover of Sport Aviation, it was the guy who spent the most money. And so I'm really encouraged by this, this direction towards affordability and then of course the safety thing too. So we need to continue to emphasize that, but, but I think we're going in the right direction. How are things going with the RV-12? It looks like there's a lot of success stories out there. I've seen some really nice airplanes uh, out here and uh, quite a few being completed. Yeah, um, it's very satisfying. It's kind of fun to see all those RV-12s out there. Um, and it's fun also to see folks work within the, the limitations or the, the boundaries of the airplane and to be creative without deviating on the design. We seek people, we are seeing people uh, deviating from the design and that really is not where we should be going because they're going away from that safety. Every part on the RV-12 was put there for a reason, it was put there for safety and affordability. And um, I, I really think any changes are going to take us away from that. Do you see, uh, a, is there a capability, let's say for a, a very, you know, thrifty builder, someone who probably didn't, who looked at the cost of Rotax 912s new and thought, well, maybe I can go a little bit less expensive or maybe uh, put a little bit different engine. Do you see any other power plant options available for the, for the RV-12? Not currently. Um, not that are as well proven, not that are as, as light. Um, and I... I'm, you know, we all wish the price was lower, but really on a pound for pound, horsepower for horsepower basis, the 912 is about the best that we've got. What do you think of the UL Power engine? Have you looked at that at all? Have you seen one of those? I, I kind of like it. I saw saw one here, and uh, I was just looking at the engine. And me, from a A and P standpoint, I sit there and look, look at that engine. I said, I love that engine. It's just exactly what I think a small, light, hundred horsepower range engine should be. What What do you think of it? Yeah, um, I like it. Um, it, it I, I have much the same take that you do. Be, being a you know technology geek, I kind of like their uh, you know their electronic fuel injection and ignition. You know the modern accessories. Um, the and and you know boy, I know life is is you know as a designer is a set of compromises. And after living with the gear driven Rotax, I kind of I love that slow turning Rotax propeller. It gives us a lot of inherent efficiency. But it comes at a price, uh, the complexity of the, the gearbox, and it's another you know, failure point potentially. But so I'm, where I'm headed is I, I know why they went direct drive on that engine, but then it's, we're, we're giving away a little bit of fuel economy because they have to spin it up pretty fast to make the horsepower. Right. Life is that way. You know, Absolutely. It's kind of fun to see other people have to make those decisions too. Absolutely. 
Well, um, that's that's really. I tell you what, as a four builder, you know, I ordered my tail kit in 1988, and uh, that seemed like a, that's really a long time ago. But now I look at the RVs, and I, I I'm very happy to be part of that community and in myself. But I really like the the direction and the way things are going. I've always thought, though, for me personally, as kind of a closet bush pilot, that it'd be neat to see a van's design that was kind of even more designed, even more so than they are now, for maybe a little bit more rugged flying. If you could do that, and in, in just in a in a designer's world, what would it look like? Yeah, thanks for asking that one. Talk about a you know a ball right over the plate. Um, I've put, I wouldn't say pencil to paper because it's you know CAD. CAD models together for a couple of different high-wing airplanes uh, based loosely on uh, RV design principles and, and, and parts and things like that. Um, I've actually coordinated quite a bit with uh, Steve Saint and some other folks on what what that rugged flying airplane should look like and what it should do. And um, I, I don't know, um, I guess this would be a place where I'd say maybe you could elaborate a little bit more. Well, yeah, I guess I guess where I'm getting at is, is that for me personally, I'd love to see an airplane about the size and weight of the RV-8 maybe, or the RV-7, but they could haul, you know, I know the sportsmen, there's some other airplanes out there fulfilling that mission, and that's probably the reason uh, you guys have stayed in such a wonderful business plan and all, is it, deviating from the plan that's successful is uh, sometimes, you know, a business suicide just to come out with something for no good reason. Because there are some designs just literally right here in front of us today uh, that are already filling that niche. But I thought that something, I saw a long time ago a guy build a high wing RV4 and he put it for sale recently and I saw the airplane and I thought, now there's some really interesting thinking. And I bet Ken's already way ahead of us and he's already looked at maybe a high wing RV10 or something in that regard, some four place, very efficient. Um, but strong and metal construction, not fabric covered with tubes, the old uh, type construction. Is that, uh, that's kind of what I was looking at. It's something maybe that a, a, similar, a missionary type airplane, Cessna 185 capable, but not quite as large, you know, something a little bit smaller. Yeah. Um, I didn't know if that was, uh, if, that's, if that's even uh, in the realm of possibility, but that's what I was just asking. If, if you could, would it be a high wing airplane? Yeah, um, in fact, you know, you've you've kind of hit the nail on the head. What Steve and I were talking about was a high wing RV10, and so I took um, in the computer. I just took a real simple little model of the RV10 wings and RV10 tail, and started to lay out a fuselage and what would that look like, and and what would some of the features be. And um, it looks a little like uh, you know high. It's a high wing RV10, but with some different features. And, and in talking to folks that have actually flown in that realm, uh, they don't have. You know, a lot of people say, "Well, I've got to haul a 55 gallon drum," and so that puts these big doors on the side. And and the input I've gotten is, you know, we really don't need to haul a 55 gallon drum, but if you made something where I could haul five gallon cans, you know, that would be great. And so. The design I've got looks kind of a little bit pregnant because instead of having a fiberglass pod that bolts on and is heavy, I've got it kind of the pod designed in. And now we're making that weight that's, that's the pod, now it's part of the structure, it's doing work for us and it's providing a nice deep floor um, and the, the, the uh, compartments are sized for um, five gallon cans of gas and um, they're sized so that in the missionary world and in the you know camping world, you know, you don't have to get everybody and everything out to get at the one thing that's below. So it's got all these compartments. You open it up, you pull it out, and you can rapid turn around. You don't have to load, unload. Um, so that's one feature. Um, really rugged landing gear, not a spring steel, more of a bungee or or even I've got what I've got in mind is kind of a torsion bar main landing gear. Um, and the, the feature would it'd be a cantilever wing because it would be real easy again to unload and load, get underneath there. The doors could they would you wouldn't be in the way of the struts. Almost um, a helio courier look then in that regard. Almost, yeah, yeah. Um, I do think tri gear is a good choice. We can we can rustle about that and you can convince me that, that it needs to be a tail dragger. Um, and then, of course, the real challenge is going to be to keep it light. The, the main reason for a low-wing airplane is to make that structure that's the carry-through also do, you know, some other things for you. Uh, it also makes those control linkages real short, simple, so we have those wonderful flying qualities. So those are going to be the challenges uh, to such a design. And um, there's some different stability things going on, high-wing, low-wing thing. 
Um, but I'd love to get going on it. And my wife and I have been talking about, you know, just getting going on that on the side. It's not going to be part of, uh, it's not currently one of the Vans projects that we're, we're looking at. But, you know, like any guy, I'm like you, like, like Sandy, like anybody, we're always, you know, the wheels are always turning. Absolutely. And I, I really appreciate you sharing that with us because my passion, of course, as you, we're, we, we really love and support uh, missionary aviation and uh, what they do. And Sandy being a former Cessna 185 pilot for uh, missionary aviation, I'm sure he can appreciate that too. Well, I, I don't want to keep you all day, but I have one more uh, question I wanted to ask you. Um, with the advent of 100 low lead going away, Sandy and I had a little discussion this morning walking in here. Um, we were talking about there's a new electronic ignition and fuel injection tie that a, com a company's building. And it's wonderful. I think it's going to allow Lycomings to maybe even uh, officially, not officially or unofficially in the experimental world, operate safely on auto fuel. Um, I know I ran my RV4 for 10 years on auto fuel before they started adding alcohol. And I had a low compression 150 horse engine and a carburetor. And I adjusted my fuel system so that it would work. What do you think with all the 6,000 plus uh, RVs that are out there flying and most of them with Lycoming engines, um, and the, everyone telling us that 100 low lead is probably you know, going to go away here in the next five or ten years. Um, what do you foresee as a, maybe a potential solution for that problem? Yeah, as far as the basic fuel system of all the fleet of RVs, I think the components, the materials, everything is pretty well compatible with the, the auto fuel. Of course, the sealant can tolerate the auto fuel, our aluminum lines, you know, no problem there. So as long as uh, either Lycoming or somebody else, uh, you know, as far as the diaphragms and hoses and things solves those problems, uh, firewall forward, yeah, I think the path is really clear. Like you, I've been running auto fuel in my RV4 for a little while, and um, I you know, you do it carefully and, and measured amounts, and, and I keep one tank with 100 low lead, so there's always a solution. So, um, uh, you know, kind of working around the, the eventual weaning ourselves off of that. Um, other things that I see needing to happen um, on my little Volkswagen powered airplane, I knew it was going to run on auto fuel. So, where I put the fuel pump, I, I made it come exactly out of the fuel tank and right into that pump. So, you know, to pay attention to the potential for vapor lock. So, it's pushing the fuel all the way. RV12 is exactly that way. So, that's one thing we may have to think about where we put our fuel pumps. Another thing, and these are extreme cases, uh, another thing that we may have to pay greater attention to is a fuel return line. And so the RV-12 has a fuel return. The RV-10, we've, uh, when we had our Continental engine on it, it uh, we developed a, a return system for that. So I th all future RVs will, if not have a f return system in them, they will certainly be provisioned for re uh, return lines so that we can you know, do that lower vapor pressure thing. Um, but by and large, I think we're in good shape. Excellent. Well, Ken, I know uh, your time is valuable here, and it's a busy show, but we always love talking to you. I always love talking to you and hearing, uh, hearing an engineer's standpoint on things because uh, the closest I ever came to becoming an engineer in my life was I rode a train once. <laughs> but uh, Ken is a real engineer and an and a innovative genius in, uh, in the world of sport aviation. We just want to say thank you, and uh, we look forward to talking to you soon. Thank you, and I, yeah, it's my pleasure. Talk to you later. Thanks. Appreciate it, Ken. And reporting from Oshkosh, this is Rob Ray. See ya.